Well, good morning, everybody. Um, we're obviously not having class today, once again, because of snow. So I'm going to do my best to cover some of the material in section 10.4 so that um, when we return to class on hopefully Wednesday, we can proceed forward into section 10.5 with lines and planes and so forth. So let's talk a little bit about the cross product. This is my first time using, by the way, this program screencast o -Matic, so um, there may be a few technical glitches as we go along, but hopefully this will work out. So last time we talked about, uh, at the very end of class, I think we had five minutes left to talk about a matrix and what it was. Um, so here you can see on the screen, it's simply a rectangular array of entries. This is a three by three matrix. And we talked about how to find the uh, determinant of that three by three matrix. Um, and I gave you this crazy long formula, which hopefully you can see um, on the screen there. I don't know if it's obscure. Let me move this. I'm going to move this to the top right. I think that might work better. Um, so this formula, I said, is pretty crazy, and not many people will actually remember it, that there was an easier way to find the determinant of a 3x3 three three matrix. And we talked about using the diagonals. And if you recall, we copied over the first column again right here, and then the second column again right next to it here, so that we could do diagonals in this way. A1, B2, C3. A2, B3, C1 would be here. And then A3, B1, C2, if you copied those other columns over. And so that was our method for finding the determinant of a 3x3 three three matrix. So here's an example of finding a determinant. There's matrix M. Um, you can see it has its nine entries in there. And so the determinant is found by 2 times 5 times 1. That's the main diagonal right here. Plus 3 times 6 times negative 2. Plus negative 1 times 0 times negative 4. Those are the columns that go um, down as you move from left to right. And then you subtract off the diagonals uh, that go down as you go from right to left. So I'm subtracting so I'm also negative 1 uh, times 5 times negative 2, then minus 6 times negative 4 times 2, and lastly subtracting 1 times 0 times 3. And you can see if you actually carry out those multiplications, uh, 10, negative 36, 0, negative 10, 48 and 0, add it all up, 12 is the determinant of that matrix. So that's how to find um, the basic uh, determinant of a 3x3 three three matrix. But why do we care? What are they used for? Um, well, we use them to help calculate the cross product. So as you can see there, the cross product of two vectors is defined in terms of the determinant of a matrix containing the components of the two vectors. And we're going to put the two vectors inside a matrix and use a cross product, uh, use a determinant then to determine the cross product. And I'll show you an example in just a minute. But first of all, it's important to know the cross product is only defined for vectors in R3. So you cannot find the cross product of two um, R2 vectors or R4 vectors. So what they have to be uh, vectors in R3. So three components. And the result of the cross product is another vector. So the dot product of two vectors gave us a scalar, but the cross product of two vectors gives us another vector. So here is the actual definition of the cross product. So you see that we have uh, two vectors, vector u, which you can write either in component form this way, um, or in terms of i, j, and k vectors this way, and then vector v in both of its forms. So the cross product of u and v, which we denote u cross v, is given by the determinant of this matrix. So notice that the first row entries in this matrix are the i, j, k vectors, the standard basis vectors, and then we put the components of vector u in the middle row and the components of vector v on the bottom row. And yes, as we'll see later, the order does in fact matter. So if you do u cross v, u needs to go in the middle and v needs to go in the bottom. 
you will get something different if you put v here and u here. You get v cross u in that case, and we'll, as we'll see later, u cross v does not equal v cross u. And so down here we see that, um, I'm not sure where my mouse went, okay, there it is, that this is the result of actually finding that determinant. And again, this is a crazy formula to remember. Um, it's not something I remember. Oh, I need to do u2 times v3 minus u3 times v2 and make that the component of i. It's, it's not a very easily remembered formula. So I'm going to show you um, a way to do this in what I think is more quickly. And it's by using cofactor expansion of um, vectors. So I realized that I started off with a 3x3 three three matrix, um, but let's consider a 2x2 two two matrix and how you find the determinant there. So in the 2x2 two two matrix A, B, C, D, the determinant of it is simply A times D minus B times C. So multiply um, both diagonals together and then subtract. So where um, A, D is the first item in the subtraction and then B, C is the second item in the subtraction. So we can use this idea of finding determinants of 2x2 two two matrix matrices to help us find the determinant of a 3x3 three three matrix. And I think that's, that's the way I remember to find the cross product. So here's a 3x3 three three matrix, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. I got tired of putting subscripts, so I just made this up this morning. So A, B, and C are all in the first row, similar to how I, J, and K were in the definition of the cross product. And so I'm going to call A, B, and C cofactors, and you'll see what we can do with those here in just a second. So for the cofactor A um, right here, what we want to do is cross out all the entries that share either its column or its row. So that means we're going to cross out A, B, C, and we're going to cross out A, D, G. And what you're left with is a 2 by 2 matrix, E, F, H, I. It's actually called a minor matrix if you take linear algebra. Um, hopefully we'll be able to offer that at CBCC soon. And you could um, learn more about this cofactor expansion. But for our purposes, it's just important that we see there is a 2x2 two two matrix left there. Now we can continue, now that we have a 2x2 two two matrix and we've talked about it, we know how to find the determinant of that 2x2 two two matrix. The determinant of EFHI is E times I minus f times h. But there are two other cofactors in the first row, namely b and c, and we can get two more 2 by 2 matrices whose determinants we can find if we cross out the row and column that uh, the cofactor shares. So for the cofactor b, where'd my mouse go? Okay, there it is. For cofactor b, we're going to cancel out A, B, C, and cancel out B, E, H, and we're left with the matrix D, F, G, I, which I've got here, D, F, G, I, whose determinant is D, I minus F, G. And if we use C as our cofactor and cross out A, B, C, and C, F, I, we're left with the 2 by 2 matrix here, D, E, G, H, whose determinant would be D times H minus E times G. So we've got uh, three determinants. Here you'll see them, EI minus FH, DI minus FG, and DH minus EG that we found from our smaller 2 by 2 matrices. It turns out that the determinant of this larger 3 by 3 matrix uh, can be found by multiplying the cofactor times the determinant of that minor matrix. So the determinant of this big matrix, M, is given by A times our smaller determinant, minus b times the other smaller determinant, plus c times the third smaller determinant. And real important here is this minus sign right here. So when you're finding determinants using this method, make sure you put a negative symbol in front of whatever is here. And since we're going to be finding um, determinants of 3 by 3 matrices where the top row is ijk, representing the standard basis vectors, that means that your component for J is always going to be preceded by a minus sign here. So let's actually do this. If we consider the vectors U, 2, 3, negative 1, and V being negative 1, 1, 4, we can find the cross product 
of u cross v. And so here's how we'd set it up. Uh, u cross v is the determinant of this matrix where we have i, j, k as our standard basis vectors in the first row. Since we're doing u cross v, we want the components of u in the middle row, 2, 3, and negative 1. Excuse me, and then v needs to be in the bottom row, negative 1, 1, and 4, which you see here. And then what I've got here is the uh, cofactor expansion to find the uh, determinant of this matrix. So the term, um, the coefficient of i, because we're going to start with i, is the determinant of this little 2 by 2 matrix right here. So 3 times 4 is 12, which you see right here, minus negative 1 times 1, which is negative 1. So 12 minus negative 1 times i. And then for j, notice I went ahead and put my minus sign out here. And then we're going to do 2 times 4, which is 8, minus negative 1 times negative 1, which is 1. So 8 minus 1 times j. And then lastly for k, we're left with the 2 by 2 matrix here, 2, 3, negative 1, 1. The determinant of that matrix is 2 times 1, which is 2, minus 3 times negative 1, which is negative 3. So if we simplify here, 12 minus negative 1 is 13, 8 minus 1 is 7, and 2 minus negative 3 is 5, and make sure we grab that negative sign in front of the j. And so the answer here for the cross product is 13i minus 7j plus 5k, or in component form, 13 comma negative 7 comma 5. And so that's how you find cross product. If I went too fast, I apologize. I'm trying to make these videos short. Um, but you can uh, rewind and watch that part again, obviously, if you have questions. So a few properties here uh, of the cross product. I'm probably going to make two videos because this program only allows me to make a 15-minute long video. So I'm going to try to speed through this material. Um, but it turns out the cross product of two parallel vectors, u and v, in R3 is always the zero vector. And this is actually very easy to prove. If we were in class, I would do this on the board. I'm not going to take the time to um, write this up here. But remember that if, if a vector is parallel to another vector, um, that it is a scalar multiple um, of the other. So you could start out by saying that um, u is the vector u1, u2, u3, and then that v is the vector k times u1, u2, and u3. And then if you try to compute the cross product using the method we just uh, worked out, you'll find that the components of i, j, and k all end up being zero, which is the zero vector. A few other properties. I mentioned this earlier. The cross product is not commutative. Um, u cross v does not equal v cross u. In fact, the term for it is so that it's anti-commutative. So you can see for any two vectors, u and v and r3, v cross u is the negative of u cross v, so it goes in the exact opposite direction. It's also very easy to prove. Um, if you just multiply both of them out, you'll see that they're the same thing. Make up two vectors, u and v, and, and see what you get. And um, here we have multiplication by a scalar and the cross product, so if you want to multiply c times the cross of u and v, it's the same thing as if you multiplied the scalar times u and then did the cross, or it's the same as if you had done c times v and then did the cross. Notice the order of the cross is still the same in both cases. The u vector comes first and the v vector is second, but you can choose to put the scalar in either the u or the v. Do not distribute it to both, so that's kind of interesting here. Unlike real numbers, you wouldn't say c u and c v. You have to pick which one of those to multiply at times. And so here are two distributive properties, since the cross product is not commutative. So for three vectors, u, v, and w, u cross v plus w is equal to u cross v plus u cross w. Or if you want to do the addition of u plus v and then cross it with w, it's the same thing as u cross w plus v cross w. So keeping that order is very important. And that's going to have to be the end of this video because I have a 15 minute time limit on how long these recordings can be. So I hope this has been helpful and I'll upload another one here shortly. Thanks.